Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said ceasefire negotiations with Moscow can only begin once the Russian military completely pulls out of his country. Wow. There will be an understanding of peace and security in the future only if Russian troops are not on our territory, Zelensky said in a group interview in Kiev with Nikki and other international media organizations. Man lives in a la-la land. Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. In the world of resolving conflicts, it is often expected that the side that loses will be the one to suggest peace talks. It's a common sense approach backed by historical examples. However, things seem to be taking a different turn as the Kiev regime suggests a peace summit that intentionally leaves out Russia, the victor. This move challenges the usual way of doing things and raises questions about current state of global politics. It's like we are in a time where truth and logic do not hold as much weight. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, during a visit to Bern, Switzerland, announced plans for a global peace summit aimed at resolving the ongoing conflict with Russia. President Vaila Amvert confirmed Switzerland's readiness to organize the conference. The Ukrainian and Swiss teams are set to begin preparations for the summit, with details yet to be disclosed. Notably, the absence of Russia in these discussions raises questions about the inclusivity of the peace initiative. Zelensky emphasized that the summit seeks to build upon previous achievements, ensuring a fair resolution to the war and a complete restoration of the international law. Additionally, Ukraine's chief of staff, Adri Yemak, highlighted the significance of China's involvement in the peace talks. Yemak stated after a diplomatic meeting in Switzerland that Ukraine aims to include China in discussions regarding its 10-point peace formula. This call for Chinese participation adds a geopolitical dimension to the conflict resolution efforts. Yemak's remarks coincide with Chinese Premier Li Chiang leading a delegation in Davos during the World Economic Forum. Potential meeting between President Zelensky and Premier Li remains uncertain, but the interest in involving China underscores Ukraine's strategic approach to Ghana broader international support in ending the war with Russia. The Ukrainian government's recent push to involve China in peace talks with Russia has become a point of contention with various challenges surfacing in the process. Despite persistent efforts, Endeavour is viewed by some as ill-advised due to the well-established strategic alliance between China and Russia. This alignment, rooted in geopolitical interests, poses a considerable obstacle to Ukraine's hopes of securing Chinese support in the ongoing conflict. The Ukrainian president also said he would like greater Chinese involvement in the talks over the peace formula. China has a great influence on the Russian Federation, he said. We would not want China to provide any kind of military assistance to Russia. And this does not refer to individual weapons. It concerns various technologies that China has. Without China's support, Russia is isolated, Zelensky said. But I'm more on. China, undeniably a major player in the global arena, is recognized for its economic and military prowess. The emerging consensus is that Beijing, as a key actor in the multipolar world order, is unlikely to exert a diplomatic pressure on Russia that would compromise its own interests. The growing independence of China's foreign policy is bolstered by its military and economic strength, and that further underscores the challenge faced by Ukraine in convincing China to take a stance against its ally. Russia. This attempt to include China in the peace talks is perceived by many as unrealistic, primarily due to the existing equilibrium in the China-Russia partnership. This equilibrium is evident in their collaboration within multiple global organizations like BRICS Plus and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or the SCO. This partnership makes it challenging for Ukraine to secure meaningful support from China in isolation from Russia. The platform of the World Economic Forum provides Ukraine with an opportunity to present its peace initiative to Chinese officials. However, doubts linger about the effectiveness of this approach, especially considering the strained nature of China's diplomatic interactions with Ukraine. NATO too sees the WEF as a chance to press China into participating in a peace summit, but the viability of such efforts remains uncertain given the current geopolitical realities. President Zelensky's persistent emphasis on garnering global support against Russia has raised concerns about the prioritization of optics over substance in diplomatic strategies. Pursuit of involving China, despite the clear alliance between China and Russia, prompts questions about the effectiveness of Ukraine's diplomatic maneuvering. Ukraine's endeavor to involve China in peace talks is marked by a challenging diplomatic landscape. Swiss Foreign Minister Ignacio Cassis, in a candid assessment, acknowledges a fundamental reality in conflict resolution. Progress is elusive without the genuine willingness of both conflicting parties to engage in 
negotiations. In the context of the proposed peace summit, the non-participation of one of the key parties, or the victor party, that is Russia, emerges as a critical hindrance to any substantial progress. The absence of Russia from the negotiation table significantly limits the potential for constructive engagement. Without Russia's active participation, the summit lacks comprehensive representation of the conflicting perspectives and key decision makers, thereby diminishing its efficacy. Moreover, Switzerland's historical neutrality throughout the war implies that it is unlikely to endorse or facilitate peace talks that exclude any of the conflicting parties. The Swiss government's impartial stance positioned the country as a fair and neutral mediator, emphasizing the importance of inclusivity in peace process. Switzerland's reputation as a wise player on the international stage suggests that it would prioritize comprehensive negotiations over talks that exclude key stakeholders. Further complicating the situation are the perceived unrealistic demands put forth by the Kiev regime, notably the insistence on Russia's complete withdrawal. Such demands seen as obstructive and final introduce a significant obstacle to potential negotiations. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said ceasefire negotiations with Moscow can only begin once the Russian military completely pulls out of his country. Wow. There will be an understanding of peace and security in the future only if Russian troops are not on our territory, Zelensky said in a group interview in Kiev with Nikki and other international media organizations. Man lives in a la-la land. Zelensky is adamant that there would be no peace talks under the current conditions. We cannot recognize our territories as the territories of the Russian Federation. Zelensky acknowledged that this country is struggling militarily, saying Ukraine forces are still not fully equipped with the brigades, with the weapons we needed, and the total dominance of Russia in the sky is simply not enough air defense equipment. Zelensky pointed to the 2015 Minsk agreement between Kiev and Moscow to explain why he does not want to open negotiations for a truce. That deal sought to halt the conflict that began when Russian-backed separatists seized swaths of eastern Ukraine following Russia's 2014 annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. The requirement for a complete withdrawal might be viewed as a non-starter by Russia or will be viewed as a non-starter by Russia, making it challenging to establish common grounds for fruitful discussions. Unrealistic expectations are set to impede the process of negotiations. Minister Cassis's acknowledgement of the need for both warring parties' willingness to negotiate underscores a foundational principle in conflict resolution. On top of that, Zelensky is making demands that seem unfeasible and unlikely to be agreed upon by Russia. The insistence on reclaiming Crimea and other conditions. Zelensky has consistently vowed to reclaim Crimea, signaling a commitment that runs counter to Russia's strategic interests in the region. The ongoing Ukrainian counteroffensive initiated to regain lost territory has faced challenges, particularly in the southeast, where Ukrainian troops encounter extensive Russian minefields and trenches. The slow progress on the battlefield adds a layer of complexity to Zelensky's extremely stupid demands, making them seemingly unfeasible for Russia. Kiev's conditions for peace are viewed by some as a call for Russia's unconditional capitulation. Yes, you heard that right. Kiev wants Russia to capitulate unconditionally despite winning the war. The strategic importance of Crimea and Donbass for Russia introduces a significant obstacle as these regions hold considerable value for Moscow. Expecting Russia to relinquish control over these territories is impractical. Zelensky's additional demands such as the return of allegedly stolen Ukrainian children contribute to the perceived impracticality of the conditions set by Ukraine. Reports of Russia perpetrating war crimes, including the alleged abduction of Ukrainian children, have been disseminated by Western media like Bloomberg and CNN. However, the credibility of these claims is contested, as Zelensky's demand for the return of children raises questions about the validity of the accusations against Russia. So as the war fatigue sets in, Zelensky's decision to initiate peace talks is a significant development. However, the audacity of retaining demands, particularly those considered improbable, adds uncertainty to the peace process. The notion of inviting China to the negotiations despite the strong China-Russia friendship introduces another potential hurdle as it is unlikely that China would align against Moscow for the sake of Kiev. All this suggests a challenging road ahead for peace talks. Well, it's about Zelensky snaps out of his daydreams and faces the music. Admitting defeat in this war is long overdue.